What's going on guys, this is Jake with Exodus. On this week's episode, we are going to Kentucky to visit with Clay and Darren. Now, it is one house but two guests, so we get twice the bucks, twice the stories here in this episode. Also, there's some really cool Velvet Bucks here in this episode, you guys are gonna really enjoy it. If you do, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Now, let's go ahead and get into the episode. What's up guys, welcome to the house, come on in. This is Mandy. This is my girlfriend. This is our place. This is my good man Darren here. We uh, doing a little bit different this time. We got some of Darren's mounts. We got some of mine. A lot of cool stories. Let's go start us out in the garage. Don't mind the mess. It's a little cold in Kentucky right now. But here's the pride and joy. I got my bass boat. Got all kinds of rods and reels set out. Got a tournament coming up in two weeks. So it's a little bit of a mess. We're trying to get everything organized on it for uh, upcoming trips in the tournament season. So back to the warm house. All right, let's talk about my biggest buck. This is a deer we called Krabby. He, uh, I believe he was four and a half, possibly five and a half when I shot him. Story on this deer, uh, my dad landed a permission farm, did some work for the guy, let us hunt there a couple years and uh, Right immediately, first trail camera pull, we got pictures of this deer at, I believe, like I said, three or four. We all tried to hunt him, no success, couple sightings, wound up the, uh, another guy that hunted with us shot at this deer that same year and missed, thankfully. So, you know, fast forward one year, it's opening day of rifle season. I go down in a, a big thick bottom. I'm sitting there and seeing a couple good bucks or whatever, and right at last light, that prime time, I hear a buck chasing a doe and look up and here he comes. and. Heck, he went 40 yards and 163 inches. Just a stud. Great mount. The whole the whole, the whole setup is great. So let's go downstairs and check out the rest of them. We'll start with the turkeys. We'll get them knocked out real quick. Uh, this is one of my, I shot this past spring. Just a really nice spurred turkey. Mandy, her first turkey ever is, of course, a double beard. Great hunt. A couple I had shot in the previous. I got beards and spurs everywhere. Um, this is also Mandy's. This is before I knew her. She shot this one, and she actually shot this one right here in the backyard. I mean, right out the back window. It was pretty cool. This eight pointer here, I shot that, I believe, on September 24th of 17. I was shot, Darren was filming me on that one on a big bean field farm. Still thankful for Darren to let me shoot that deer. Super cool hunt. Never forget that one. Um, big 12 pointer here. It's my, actually my still my biggest bow buck. He taped in at like 149, just shy of 150. Uh, shot him on November 6th. It was a sweet hunt. We were sitting there and hadn't seen much. And right right at last light again, he came in, made a scrape right in front of us, and presented a 20 yard shot. And it was awesome. Uh, my only velvet, and hopefully my last, they're a pain to deal with, they're beautiful. I shot him at my family farm, which is just five, 10 minutes down the road. He, uh, he came in perfect. My uncle hooked me up with that one. I think he was at, right at 136. He's actually got 16 scoreable points, which is cool. Um, bunch of sheds. This is some of mine, Darren's best sheds we found. Um, this 10 pointer here, I chased this deer. This, he's a, this is four and a half year old side. I chased him for a while. Never could get in front of him. The one year I was really trying, he dropped early. I went out and found his sheds. So we got this kind of unique buck here. I shot him on a farm that now my cousin owns, which is kind of cool. It used to be a permission farm. He's got all kinds of weird stuff going on. He's got a big turn here, big acorn here and here. Just a cool buck. I think he was right in the mid 130s as well. Can't hardly remember. Just a different dye on the European than normal. Um, another European here. This was 2019, I believe. This is a, I shot this deer on a small farm. Everybody's all about these big farms, but they overlooked them 25 to 30 acre farms. And this is what he came off of. It's all about having the right funnels and offering the right stuff in between those big farms is what I've been coming to find out. So don't overlook them uh, little 
little nooks and cranny farms. I got one more deer in the other room. We'll go check it out real quick. My first ever bow buck. I know he's not much, but you gotta start somewhere. He, uh, I shot him on the ground with an old piece of crap bow, but it started the, started the love and addiction. Nice 12 pointer I shot on another friend's farm with a rifle. And that buck, that eight pointer there is the first buck I ever shot by myself. I think I was 14 or 15. My dad let me go out and hunt by myself for the first time and got him. Couple old pictures. This one's pretty good. I'll show you guys this one. My first ever buck. He, uh, not much. Great picture, great memories. Started it right there. Got a good picture of me and my brother, my grandpa here. Big stringer of white bass we caught down on Dale Hollow Lake. I've been going there 20 years. I was a young buck back in the day. Another good one of me and my grandpa and my brother. He just passed away on Christmas Day. So a lot of good memories we've had. He taught me a lot about the outdoors. I'm real appreciative of all that. So I'm going to hand it off to Darren. And he's going to talk about the rest of these Magnum bucks in the room. What's up, guys? Um, I'm Darren. We just kind of got the quick tour of Clay's. Um, like he said from the beginning, we just made it easier. Clay and I have grown up filming together. Brought all the heads to one place, make it easier for everybody. But uh, I'm gonna start over here. This is the deer that started everything for Clay and I. So we go back to a deer, one of the European mounts there Clay started with. That's when I first met Clay. He actually shot the deer on film. I was kind of known for doing the editing. He shows up at my house, first time I ever met him. Um, threw that together, but uh, so we got together filming. Uh, our local university here did something cool where you could go up, take a quick uh, class, and they'd let you borrow HD cameras. So we did that, borrowed these cameras. And this deer here was um, a deer I got permission to hunt. Like Clay had mentioned, a small farm. I think it was like 30 acres, 29, something like that. And um, it was kind of cool. It used to be a bean farm. They used to grow beans on it. And from talking to the neighbors that lived there, um, a couple years before they never harvested them. So what was what was going on is like these beans were just regrowing holding these giants So we were actually hunting a deer that would probably not only dwarf him But probably dwarf the rest of them that we called HD. He ended up getting killed gun season was 163 inch 8 pointer um, But when this deer stepped out full velvet, I'd never killed a velvet. He's my biggest deer at the time clay obviously filming is, is kind of funny because he came out in the field and I wasn't even shaking. I was worried, where's the where's the big one at? And you know, I turn around and I look at Clay, I was like, should I shoot him? And, and the only thing Clay says is, it's up to you. And I was wanting him to say, no, don't shoot him, but he never did. So um, ended up shooting him, don't regret it. It's all, uh, I think he taped out at 155 gross. Uh, that's one thing with us, we don't really worry about the net. Net's for fish. So if they grow it, we score it. Um, this deer was, let's see, that was 2012. This one would have been uh, 2018, so six years later off the same farm. After I killed that deer, the beans kind of vanished. They went away. Never had any more shooters down there. It was a doe farm loaded with does. And then uh, 2018, drove by one night. Clay and I were actually squirrel hunting at my house, and we said, let's go drive down there. We heard there's a good deer down there this year. Drove by, and sure enough, there he was. So started hunting him, named him Clyde. Couldn't think of a name for him. Kind of came up with Bonnie and Clyde because I couldn't catch up with him. Couldn't get him on a pattern. He was dark all the time. But I kind of figured something out that whenever it would rain in the afternoon, he'd be in there in daylight. So sure enough, opening day, we got like a 45-minute rainstorm. And I told Clay, so we're going to go in there. We're gonna... I didn't tell him this. I was kind of confident in the back of my mind. with like uh, didn't want to jinx it, but I was like, he's going to be there tonight because of the rain. And sure enough, like 8.15, we were hunting in trees about this big around. And like any time, any movement, it was shaking. It was... Had like 15 deer around us, but uh, but it was pretty cool. Um, and then this one, not my biggest, but probably my favorite. Um, killed him on the family farm, 2019. No idea where he came from. Uh, you know, obviously being right outside my door, I run cameras there religiously. And um, just, he showed up out of nowhere one day. I was coming home from work, seeing him and another deer and I think June, I mean, I could tell they were going to be good deer, but didn't know what they'd turn into. They disappeared for a couple months and then came home one day. They were in that field again, and they just blown up into two really good deer. Um, and he gave me fits. This is a deer that, you know, all these deer from September, I've kind of built my own golden rules on what not to break and what not to do. And this deer, I broke every single rule I ever set for myself. And uh, he gave me fits for a while, and it's a pretty lengthy story on him. So I had pictures of him he was disappearing 
all over the place. Went in the hang stands on a Monday after work. Um, nothing went right. Couldn't find a tree small enough, believe it or not, to even get straps around. So I'm in there cussing, sweating, blowing deer out of here. And it took me three days to hang a stand. And by then I was like, there's no way I'm killing this deer. This deer's gone. So the night I killed him was one night after work. I slipped in and it borders up to a subdivision and everyone was mowing their yard. It was like mow your night, mow your yard night in, in the subdivision. And then I had a guy on a lawn tractor in the creek below me scooping rocks out. And I'm just like, what am I even doing here? So I'm, I'm like slugging the water, crunching it, don't care. Lean down to put it in my backpack, and he's at 10 yards behind me. Came from the opposite direction I expected him to, but everything worked out. And cool thing about him is, like Clay had mentioned, velvets are a pain. Um, I try to avoid it if I can, but he was kind of like right in the middle, still had some hanging, so that worked out great. Looks cool on the mount. Um, he taped out at 147, and I kind of want to rescore him because, I, I mean, he looked, I don't know, but still pretty cool. And then... Uh, Moving on to this one here, this is Pretty Boy. And cool thing with him is I've got permission to hunt this farm. And when I was putting out the first set of cameras on the farm, I picked this shed up. And then the first camera check had him on camera as a three-year-old and knew who it was. and Killed him as a four-year-old, my guess. He did quite a bit of growing in two years, but he kept all the same characteristics, kind of the flyer fours, stickers off his bases. Um, it was pretty cool. Even as a three-year-old, he looked exactly the same, but... This was one that um, he tapes out of 168, gross. My biggest, hard telling when I'll kill one bigger than him, I don't know. But again, this is one Clay filmed. Pretty Boy was a cool story. It was kind of one of our golden rules in September. We don't, you know, wake up in the mornings to hunt. We just, we sleep in, we go eat breakfast, um, and then put together the game plan based on wins, what have you, for the evening hunts. And he was one that, like, two weeks before season, he just quit on his evening wouldn't show up, it was dark, midnight, two o'clock in the morning, but he was hanging around like that 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning routine. And I told Clay, I said, you can call me crazy. I was like, but I'm gonna put together a game plan to where we can slip in there at five o'clock in the morning and stare at darkness for a couple hours to kill this deer. And first time we did it, um, ended up killing him. So it worked out, it was pretty cool. Clay was running late that morning. He originally told me that he was gonna sleep in because, I mean, who wouldn't, 5 o'clock in the morning, like, the, I thought the idea was crazy. I know he thought the idea was crazy. So I'm driving to the farm. He calls me and says, I'm on my way. And then, you know, as I'm getting ready in the hayfield, I just see his headlights bouncing. And uh, we snuck down. We had about, I don't know, 600-yard walk in there. But, like I said, everything worked out pretty cool for it. So, um, And then the last one I've got here, uh, this is a deer I named Red. And you can't really see it. He kind of moved into his, like, October coat. But his summer coat was just really – he was just – like the one of the reddest coats I've seen. He's still got it on his forehead here. Um, this is a deer that I had pictures of as a three-year-old, and I thought about hunting him as a three-year-old, but he just was like, he was just right there on the brink. And I've actually got his sheds from when he was a three-year-old right here. He's matching set. I found him in a hay field just laying side by side, which was pretty cool. And uh, again, he was another one that, I mean, he did some pretty, pretty good growth from three to four. But... Um, He's probably my favorite deer to have hunted because he was just one that I could not, just couldn't seem to uh, put anything together on him. And uh, I actually, it, it was pretty cool because Clay and I had hunted him one, the first night and the wind was swirling something awful. And uh, I even remember telling Clay, I was like, maybe we should probably get out of here. But, you know, being stubborn, we were here, we didn't. And that hunt in that area never had a single picture of him again. So we completely blew him out of there. And I ended up going back to pictures I had of him the previous year as a three-year-old in different spots and finally put the pieces together that he was using uh, a little pond dam between two drainages to kind of access this whole block of timber. And uh, first night, Clay and I went in there, did a hanging hunt, killed him that first night in there, so that was pretty cool. He scored right at 150. I think it was actually like 149 and some change, but like I said, he was probably my favorite deer to hunt. It took me, I mean, just months of putting pictures together to figure out what was what was going on with him, so... But he was definitely uh, one of the cool ones, one of the frustrating ones. Um, so, again, we come back over to the shed pile. Clay kind of went through some of his. Um, this one right here, this is a cool one. This is a deer we called Mr. Brow. So, this is kind of, let's see, this would have been, I think, 2012, the same year I killed the velvet over there. Uh, this is a deer Clay and I were hunting. This was a farm I had permission to hunt. I had pictures of him. He had shrunk considerably the following year. 
but uh, we were actually moving a set to hunt this deer uh, that coming weekend when we found this shed from him from the year before. So it was pretty good. Obviously, you can see where he got his name from. Just big magnum brow tines. This shed was just a turkey hunting bonus. I never had pictures of this deer. Never saw him in person. No idea who he was, where he came from, but just turkey hunting. Found it right in the middle of a field of a farm that I hunted all the time. So no idea. But a cool story is, is a friend of mine, good friend of mine, Cody, his mom knows a neighbor, probably has a crow flies, maybe two miles down the road, actually found the matching side to this shed like a year later. So I'm guessing he was just cruising through whatever, dropped an antler or what have you. But uh, this is one of the Magnum's sheds that I've got. And the cool thing is, is with this deadhead here, it's pre pretty sure it's the same deer, just a year apart. But uh, this deer scores 175. I hate to find him like this, but it's kind of cool to have him. And the cool thing about it is I actually found this deer on one day found him and then the next day i went back to the same area and actually found the shed the next day um, and i searched high and low for that matching side but never could find it all right guys well that kind of wraps it up that's all me and darren have to offer so i guess uh we'll see you next time